All right, we're about to get to the end of our day with Nancy, and we've had a wonderful day here at Vaughn Elementary and learned so much. But we've gone through from, from the macro to the micro. We talked about G CCGPS overall, and then sort of how you plan your own units, integrating all the different um, you know, resources that you had from all over the place, and then down to the more granular level of how you actually planned lessons. And we looked at your specific lesson, mm -hmm. um, working towards this assessment, where you modeled that gradual release of responsibility, you um, had the kids going through informational text, close reading, mm -hmm. annotating, looking for information, filling out a graphic organizer with your little hamburger there with the introduction and the conclusion, and the meat in the middle, and they took notes and they knew that they had to hook their audience, do a lot of these concepts that we teach in middle and high school, and you really are introducing those effectively. Now the rubber's hitting the road with they're actually producing something on which they will be assessed and graded, mm -hmm. and this is information that will go to the parents and eventually to the report card and mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Now we looked at the rubric earlier about, yes. and the students understood very clearly what they were going to be expected to do at the end, and you modeled that. Um, so let's revisit the rubric and tell me a little bit about what exactly you're assessing here and mm -hmm. how you assessed it and how the reading and writing assessments fit together. Well, the writing assessments really t were the overall umbrella of what we were doing, what we're looking at. So this assessment, you really want to look at the writing. And I see mm -hmm. that you've got mm -hmm. grammar and language in there, as we well did. as organization and all those things. We did pull in with the writing standards. We went ahead and looked at which standards supported that, that we could also look at along with So this with is it. informational, so mm -hmm. that's W2. W2. And we also pulled in W7 with the research connections. Because it is research, isn't mm -hmm. it? They were taking notes from informational right. text. Right. And reading is, reading and writing are so intertwined and connected really with one really another. Is. So that we can also do some assessments, a little a bit of our assessments through the writing. But we also have the DRA, the developmental reading assessment that we also use. So you are able to assess reading comprehension through what the children are writing, right. um, but also, really specifically, your rubric focus here was on the writing, the organization, right. and the and the using the DRA text to support so the reading. So the, so the DRA scaffolds so that you get mm -hmm. the reading comprehension assessment as right. well. Um, I know that there are a lot of different tools out there um, for reading assessment. Can you tell us a little bit about this one that you use? Well, the developmental reading assessment, the DRA, is an assessment tool that we use in our county and it's leveled by independent reading level and instructional reading level. So when you assess a child and find their independent level, then you go one level above that, and that's their instructional level. So we know... So they're always challenged. They're always 75 challenged. percent. Is that sort of like a Lexa level? Um, it is, in a way, um, but we're not testing Lexile through that development. It's a separate metric. Right, right. That's but you, and, and I was asking you earlier when you told me about that, I know that there's um, a lot of different, there's Dibbles and DRA and right. a lot of the things right. out there, um, and they're, they're all good, but um, how do you, um, yeah, I was asking you, are those um, lower level DOK kinds of questions? Because mm -hmm. a lot of times reading comprehension, one of the reasons we like assessing through writing is right. we don't want to ask those questions of what was the boy's name, where, where right. you know, what happened in chapter right. two. What kinds of, um, what makes you think that the DRA is more rigorous? Well, the, the, with the DOK, it is all the time asking them throughout the assessment to go a little bit deeper, to be able to retell, and with first graders, with six and seven year olds, retelling the story from That's beginning, middle, That's one of your standards, isn't it, yes. Is huge and being able to give supporting details as to what happened throughout and you're the story. And you're even starting to look at plot structure there because you're talking you about the beginning, mm -hmm. middle, end, character development. Mm -hmm. I noticed on your wall outside you have character traits and the yes. students had, um, mm -hmm. and, and there's a, a really wonderful essential question there saying how do character traits help us to understand about the story. Or right, something help like us that. understand more about the character, main yeah. character. So. So, you, so you're integrating reading and writing through the student work, but also you have additional um, purely reading comprehension right. assessment strategies. Because there needs to be something else that you can support grades that go on your report card with, and the, so that you know. Evidence as parents. Right. You need the evidence, but as a teacher, you also need to be able to chart the progress. So that, right. that is a great assessment that will do that. So tell us a little bit about what an end product might look like and what you look for. This is an excellent one. Um, this little girl 
has taken Benjamin Franklin as her topic. Who we know is cool. Who we know is very <laughs> cool, exactly. She's got an introduction, would you like to know more about Ben Franklin? And to just look down at her conclusion, which should tie back, she's got, now you know more about Ben Franklin. So she has taken the three main questions that we've modeled for them, and she has taken notes in each one. And now looking at it, I can even see where she's even checked off in some places. That she answered the prompt. Good for her. That she has taken this information, and then it was able, this through having her notes in an organized manner, it was able to organize her thinking as she was writing. So the graphic notes. organizer guided her thinking, guided just it. like an older student's notes right. would gather. And she's going right. to put this in a prose form. And then you were telling me that now in that Daily Five cafe mm -hmm. and in your other teachable moments, you've talked about spelling, actually Absolutely. drawing these letters, mm -hmm. how to make a sentence, parts of speech, nouns and verbs. All of these things are in your rubric, and they've all been right. scaffolded for the performance on this instruction is not just isolated to one part of the day. It is integrated throughout the day. It really has to be, it doesn't has it? Because to be. it, it, communication it has is to not be. a series of discrete skills. No. It's an interactive No, process. it is something that we have to work on. Well, I time. should be able to write as neatly as this child is so impressed. She's fabulous. <laughs> you get yes. one of those in every class. Today. Yes, you have. God bless them, one in every class. So she's done a lot of things that we would be very happy to see in 5th or 7th or ninth or 11th grade, which is look at an informational text, take evidence from that text, write a thesis statement, but also a hook to hook the reader, right. have an introduction and a conclusion to give evidence for her thesis mm -hmm. and have that evidence tie exactly to the text. And I know you said you go around and model, someone puts in their notes, something that is not from the text, you call them out on that, and which allows you a moment to talk about inference. It's right, just that we, we get do. To whether we or do not a lot of mini inference. lessons on inference. So you've, you've gotten to the end here of um, what you would have been working towards for two or three weeks or whatever right. the, the period of instruction was working towards this summative assessment mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with lots of little formative assessments on the way oh, of checking the reading, mm -hmm. checking the letters you're drawing, checking the sentences that you're creating, checking the notes that you're taking. Mm -hmm. Um, I just wanted to touch a little bit on your ultimate assessment and communication tools that you use here because um, there's lots of different um, methods in place around the state and, and I'd just like to get your advice on how you do it here. I believe you have a standards-based report card. We do. We have had a standards-based report card for a few years. So our parents are used to a score of three meeting standards, a two progressing, or a one showing limited progress. So we've had the opportunity over the last few years to educate them as to what that means. They know means. what it means. Right. Mm -hmm. And we take the report card and look at the standards that are going to be assessed each nine weeks. And that is where we come up with our assessment pieces. Okay, and I see that you've got the standards sort of pulled together into domains of sort they of are. performance aspects, which is they I think are. how most standards-based report cards are. Absolutely, it has to be that way. And they've given you a wonderful guidance document, it looks we like, do. as a team within your county you guys have put we together. We have teacher rubrics that are provided to us. And this is standard-specific, I see the actual Very standards. Standard there, so specific. it's not just concepts, but you have yeah. the actual standards. Mm -hmm. And you've put them into the same way that our CRCG study guide does. You mm -hmm. put them into domains that make sense together. These right. skills go together. And a big component of that is also parent education as to what a three is, what a two looks like, and what a one is. So the parents get to look at that document, too, if they would like to, to see they what, do. what they do. We make it available to them through our classroom websites, through, through school-based websites through the county website so it's a lot of education for the parents but it really does show the progress that the and it can be a challenge um, in such an integrated curriculum you to can. be able to do a standard space report card but um, one of the positives is that it really um, shows growth effectively it really does it, it shows along the four grading periods it will show the growth so one of your challenges is to really, when you have a domain that has several integrated skills in it, yeah. every component, every dimension of that skill set has to be hit, right. or else you can't get to that three. You can't and isolate. And all of those parents want three. Yes, you can't mm -hmm. isolate all of these standards and put each standard down as a separate grade because your your document would be way too big. Right. If a, if a child doesn't have effective reading comprehension, it's going to show up as a slight deficit on their writing score mm -hmm. because they don't have the evidence, right. which is a dimension of your writing rubric. And of course, you still have to address 
um, the learning skills and behaviors and things like that on your report card. So it can't, you're taking a lot of information and condensing it down. Excellent. Well, you've done a really good job with it. Um, and then we'll just have um, one more segment where we'll just sort of wrap things up with Nancy coming up.